Let's take a look at the materials database and calculations features of Insight Live. You notice here that I've already logged in. First thing I'll do is in the upper right I'm going to click the little icon for my preferences and make sure that I've turned on material and chemistry. And it's already yes, so that's good. So I'll click on the home icon here to go back home. Notice this little blue bar here has appeared and that is my materials and I have 1758. Now if I click show, where are they? It's because I need to click this checkbox, show reference materials. Those are the reference materials that are always going to be there. So I'll click search and I can click on any letter here. So for example, if I click the A's, I'll click on Alberta Slip. And for each material, I'm going to see the analysis here and the formula here. Now the formula is is unified and the unity is simply set to the greater of the ROs or the RO2s. In this case, the fluxes are unified. And you'll notice in the list over here, the names are in italic, and this is how the system signifies that it's a reference material in this list. Of course, when it shows, it'll show the word reference material up here. And when I add my own materials, those materials will be in plain text. And as I click on each of these on this side, it, it's previewed here. If I want this window to stay open, I need to click open. And then if I click another, then that's going to be previewed beside it. Okay, so I'll close all of these. And now let's make a material or a recipe that contains a couple of these reference materials. To do that, I'll click the Add button here. And then we'll edit. And I'll call this Cone 6 Base Alberta Slip Glaze. And I'll add two lines. Click Save. And here we'll put Alberta Slip, let's say 80%, and Frit 313420. And I'll click Save. Notice that down here it's calculated the chemistry or the formula. And it's done, a, it's uh, calculated the ratio of the silica to alumina and the thermal expansion. There's a couple of error messages at the bottom. It says it cannot calculate the cost. We'll find out about that in a minute. And here, it says the chemistry calculation may be inaccurate and explains it's because one or more materials in the recipe are not found. Okay, what if I click on this Alberta slip right here, notice, here it is. But I cannot click on the FRIT 3134, so that must be the one that's not being found. And if you notice the chemistry over here, the formula of Alberta slip, is the same as the formula of this recipe. So obviously the frit is not participating. So let's just find that frit. So if I click on the F's, and here's the problem. It's called ferro frit. So let's go back and edit this. And so the first way that I can fix this, there's actually four ways to make this connection. The first one here is to simply change that name, and now here it is. It has been connected. Now, I also have the other option of, let's copy this, and I'm going to change this back to what it was, and I'll put that down here. And this is, notice it says here, recipe material and lookup. This is what will connect it to the recipe database. So I'll save that, and you notice now the connection has been made, and down here there's a little note that that's what's going that that's how the connection is being made by the lookup but let's go and change that back to what it was originally and check another option if i click here i'll close this material i can import my materials from my desktop insight and i'll be able to import all these other formats in the future and that would be a way of resolving this because if FRIT 3134 was in my private materials, then it would be found. Uh, during the import, any materials that have the same names as ones that are in the reference are not going to be imported. So to force that to happen, I would have to click that checkbox. And the process is the same as importing the other files. That will be covered in a separate video. Now there are advantages and disadvantages of importing your own materials. 
and we'll find out more about that in a minute. But let's look at an, the fourth option of making this connection. So let's try option number four. So I'm going to hide my reference materials and let's add a material. And we're going to call this frit3134. And I'll click Save. And then I'll close this. Now notice there is a connection being made, but notice that the chemistry is still the same as Alberta Slip. So I'll click on this. So it's finding this, but of course there's no chemistry here. So I could put the chemistry in here, but maybe a better option is let's edit this. And down here it says get the chemistry from the following reference material. So I'll type in Ferro Frit 3134. Save. Now it's working. Chemistry is coming from there. So I have, in a sense, a pointer here. I can put some of my own information about this material here, but the chemistry is always going to come from the reference material, so I won't have to worry about that. But we still have this issue down here. It says the cost calculation may be inaccurate because one or more materials might have a zero cost setting, which it does right here, this is for 3134. And it says it can't can't calculate the cost because one or more of the materials was not custom and that's this one and you can't set you cannot set data in a, in a in a reference material so let's do something about that so I'll set the cost of the frit to let's say two dollars a pound now we have a cost a cost being calculated here now I'm also going to add my own custom material for the Alberta slip and put a pointer to it. So we'll edit that. I'll call that Alberta slip as well. And then I'll point it to Alberta slip. And Inside Live knows that when I set up a pointer, I'm pointing it to a reference material. And we'll set this up for, let's say, um, 50 cents a pound. there we have it. It costs $1.03 a pound. Now, the reason that this unit is being used here is in the preferences, because I've set the recipe cost unit of measure at pounds. And if you look up here on the two materials, FRIT 3134, it says it's using the chemistry from Ferro FRIT 3134, which is a reference material. And likewise with Alberta Slip, it's using the chemistry of the Alberta Slip reference material. So that is the fourth way to resolve or point a material in a recipe at a material in the database so it knows the chemistry and the information to calculate cost and expansion, etc. Now the fifth way to connect the chemistry of a material to a material in the recipe is to enter a material as I've done here, add a material to your private database and define a chemistry for it. So I'm going to remove this, get the chemistry from the following reference material, save, and when I do that, watch what happens when I edit. I've got this, these boxes here, so I can add, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to add oxides, so I'll add four oxides, because there are no volatiles in the frit, and then I can type in the, the analysis, B203, 23.1, and SiO2, 46.5. So I'll save that. And now, as you can see over here, the chemistry is calculating once again. Now, if I want to revert that back to point to the chemistry of the reference material, then I would just delete all these oxides and type frit 31 or ferro frit frit 3134 back here save and I'm back to pointing to the reference material now I'll demonstrate some of the calculation features so to do that I'm going to duplicate this recipe now I've got a copy of it here 
I'm going to edit it. I'll take out this word copy right here. Save it. And then I'm going to, this has already been assigned to the G1 code number and I'll click G here and that automatically sets it to the next one which is G2. And now we have them side by side. So let me edit this one and we'll put in another line and I'll call it silica. Put in five parts. Now if we care, compare these two recipes, oh, we got a problem right here, it's complaining about missing units. So let me just edit this and we'll make this into pounds. And now we can see here that the, the silica, I'm comparing the two silicas, and if I click this little control here, I turn on some nudging control. So if I click this up arrow, each time I click that, the amount of silica is going to increase by one in the recipe. And then down here in the formula, you'll see the SiO2 increase each time I click that. And so when you have side-by-side -side recipes, you can trim the amount of materials in one and watch how the chemistry changes in compared to the other. If I click this, it removes silica from the calculation. Now they're the same again. Click it and it puts it back in. The chemistry of silica is back in the calculation. And this link right here, if I click that, now I'm seeing a non-unity formula. Now you're seeing really big numbers, of course, because I have big amounts in the recipes. If I were to remove these units, which I'll do now, if we made them all, let's say, grams, and save, now the amounts in the non-unity formula are going to be much smaller. And this is very handy where you are doing a batch, uh, a formula to batch calculation. And that's because you don't want the recipe reunifying every time you change the amount of one of the materials. And let's take a look at one more calculation feature, and that is retotaling a recipe. Uh, you can see it shows a total of the recipe right here, and if I click the word batch, or the button, the batch button, it's going to print a batch ticket for, of this total. But if I click this edit button, that changes to retotal. So if I was to change this to a thousand, and click retotal. Now you can see the amounts have been retotaled. And retotal was going to respect the units, so if I have different units in the recipe, it'll calculate it correctly. So the ability to look at recipes side by side and then put a material in there as well to see it side by side, uh, let's look at Ferro for 3134, gives you quite a few abilities to do calculations. And so you could do material substitutions you could adjust the thermal expansion of a glaze. You can do formula to batch calculations or you can just adjust the chemistry of any glaze in any particular direction. Notice also here the KNAO is always shown and it's the total of the potassium and the sodium.